the high-end supermarket that we were talking to over here, uh, they said, this was a couple months ago, they said, oh, give us an example of something we could do that we're not doing. And I said, well, I said, you know, think, think about uh, a, a simple life event, like having friends over for dinner, right? Uh, how, how many times do you go to the store? Because you go there, you think you got everything, but you didn't. Right. Then you go back and you got to buy something else. And then you have to ask one of the people that you've invited over to stop by the store on their way to your house because you, you forgot, you know, whatever, green onions <laughs> that you need to, for, for the recipe. Who knows? So I said, let's take these things, having a birthday party, uh, friends for dinner, uh, movie night, whatever, and give people checklists and a branded pen at the door and have them walk through and check the things that they need and they'll buy more from you because you're giving them the tool to understand, to, to plan for and realize the event that they need. Simple things like that and product centric organizations just miss it because they, they, don't, they don't have that, that thinking. You know what you remind me of when you're talking about that is, and it's not directly related, but is an Italy store. Do you have Italy's in Moscow yet? We do. I, I think Italy is the best retail format out there. No. It has everything having to do with Italian cooking. It has this most wonderful name in the world <laughs> of yes. Italy. Uh, and uh, and, and it, it, so it has, it has all the economic offerings. It's got commodities. It's got the produce that you can buy to create Italian food. It's got the physical goods, the pasta that they make and all the grocery items. So it's a full scale Italian grocery uh, but then add on top of that is the goods for for using all of that, the appliances that you need and so forth. And, and then they have uh, cafes and they have restaurants and multiple ones where you can eat the food that's been made by the appliances that's using the, the goods and the commodities that are in the store. And then even at the next level beyond experiences of transformations, they have a cooking school, a mission feed cooking school to turn you into an, an Italian chef. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, for your grocery store example, right, think about that. It's like it's 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 not just the they're, they're, they're in the grocery business. No, no, no. Be in the I help my customers entertain in their homes business. Absolutely. And now what else could you do to be able to do that, including a mission feed classes where you teach them how to do things? Yeah, exactly. It's just a different mentality around how you think about right. business. Wingtip that I mentioned now with the, with the Corona crisis where you can't come into the members club right in in, in San Francisco, uh, so what they do is they do have Zoom happy hours, but they, mm -hmm. and they have takeaway, but the takeaways are really more experiences in a box, right? It's not just the food and plastic containers; it's all the accoutrement we need to be able to entertain in our homes again for our family, mm -hmm. and then they have master classes with their chef showing you how to cook over the internet. Uh, as well as um, master classes for if you're a cigar aficionado or if you're a cocktails enthusiast, right? With their bartender and the cigar people all doing these things and showing these things. Uh, again, all that live over the internet because of the relationship, because it's a membership feed offering, because they view it as really we're in the business of helping you curate the lifestyle that you want to have. I think uh, I, I always say the, the biggest mistake in times of crisis is to miss the opportunities. Uh, and uh, I think that this actually, as painful as it is, uh, and an opportunity. It, it, there, there's a lot of opportunity coming out of this, a lot of opportunity to better capture and use data to customize offerings uh, and, and create value for customers. Uh, a, a new, let's say, a, a lot of reformatting. I would say shop, shopping centers are going to have to learn to create value, value and manage relationships, which they, they've only, up until now, very, very lightly managed relationships with, uh, with the customers. Uh, and the, the largest focus has been managing relationships with the, the, the tenants. Um, but I think even retailers as well have an opportunity to find these new hybrid formats uh, or, or new ways of creating value for people that will allow them to maintain a price premium and avoid further co commoditization. Um, I, I think this is a period of, uh, of opportunity. Testing and learning and finding the new formats. What, what opportunities do you see? Well, I'll, what, I, what, I, what I'd like to, to respond is, is, is not necessarily, well, some specific opportunities, but really three principles. 
right? Three principles that, that companies need to do to, to use this time that we've been given, right? Because we do have this time where we, I mean, obviously there's a ton going on in that, but, but we need to be thinking, we need to use this as an opportunity to come out of the corona crisis, not just by surviving, but in fact, by setting this up to thrive, right? What does it take to go beyond survive to, to thrive? And, and number one is, particularly for retailers and other experienced stagers, is you need to refresh your places, right? You need to, this is a time to sit and look and anew at, at your environments and saying, even as simple as why, you know, this needs painting over here and so forth, or I need to do this. But, but there's also then a lot of refreshing that needs to be done because of the, of, of the virus. You need, to, you need to obviously clean everything. We need to set up how are we going to maintain it being clean. And, and, and you need to have what, what I call safety theater. It's not enough to be clean. You have to show that you're clean, <laughs> right? <laughs> Customers have to have confidence in it. And so you need that safety theater of basically seeing uh, uh, constant cleaning going down. So set up those processes now to refresh your places. You, you're, you're going to need to make things more and more automatic, right? People are going to want to touch door handles to get in the restroom. They're not going to want to touch the toilet to flush it. They're not going to want to touch the the sink and the and the uh, soap dispenser and the water faucet and the and the, the paper towel dispenser. Uh, you need to make these things automatic. And you need to think in terms of an eye of your employees as well. You you need to make your employees safe and you need them to see that they are safe. And maybe the only door in your place is to the you know backstage break room. Well then what are you going to do with that door if everybody's touching it? Right. So at least during this interim, you know, there are tons of things that you can do to refresh your places to figure out how to keep people six feet apart to get uh, a queueless checkout. Right. Why should I have to why do I have to wait in line to get checkout? You know, Apple pioneered this, what, over 15 years ago where you get rid of the registers and anybody can check you out anywhere with the items that you have. Might be more difficult in a grocery store, yeah. but in most places where you're carrying what, what you have, why go to a register and wait in line? Right, do it, do it right there. So now's the time to, to, to refresh that. Secondly, you need to redesign your offerings. And this is where I say, don't think of yourself as in the service business of merchandising, of, of putting stuff on, on shelves basically, and then, and then helping people buy it and then check them out. Think of yourself as in the experience business, right? That you're, you're in the experience business and therefore you need to provide that time well spent. You need to provide a personal and memorable and engaging experience. And to do that, what we outlined in the uh, new re-release of the experience economy that just came out in 2020 here, uh, and with the subtitle competing for time, attention, and money, right? Because that's what every retailer, that's what every, uh, every company in the world actually competes for the time, attention, and money of individual customers. So we talk in, in there about to create that time well spent, what you need to have are, are experiences that are robust, cohesive, personal, dramatic, and, and even transformative, right? So robust, that you have a very robust experience that's fully engaging, cohesive, that it all hangs together based off of your theme of the experience, the organizing principle, that's personal, that you reach inside of people and create that personal experience within them. Um, often by customizing what you're doing, understanding who they are, that gets into all the relationship centric stuff that, that you've been talking about. It needs to be dramatic as we talked about before, which is, which is uh, creating that drama, designing the time that they are with you. Retailers in particular need to think about the, not just the what, but the how, you know, that, that what may be straightening shelf, put product on, uh, checking people out, but how you go about doing that can turn every mundane interaction into an engaging encounter. Right, yeah, if you design yeah. that time properly. And then finally, transformative, that is that, that fifth and final economic offering of going beyond the experiences, using them to help people achieve their aspirations. And, and, and that's where a cooking school, I want, I want to become a cook, provide a cooking school where I can achieve that aspiration. Right now, I want, to, I want to be safe in my home with my family, provide everything that they need to be able to do that. As we talked about, I want to be able to entertain and be able to throw a dinner party with a great meal teach them how to do that. Those are transformational experience that provide even more value than, than the regular experience does. So all of those things, you know, this is now the time to redesign your offerings to make sure you create experiences that are in fact robust, cohesive, personal, dramatic, and even transformative. And then finally is to renew your capabilities, to set yourself up to thrive even when this is over, to come up with new capabilities. And this fits into all the digital stuff that we're talking about. 
mm -hmm. right? All those hybrid models and that to be able to create not just um, information where merchandising online to be create an experience where people can interact with your people, where you can design that time online. Uh, and that will then set you up uh, to, to again, thrive, not just survive. I wish, uh, I wish I was going golfing with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were too. I always love yeah. golfing with you because you make me look good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so listen, I want to say thanks. This has been great. Um, I think everybody's going to enjoy the, the conversation. We'll break this down into modules and post it every couple of days the way we've been doing the, the previous ones. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, big thanks. Enjoy your golf game. All right. Thanks, Michael. It's been All a right. pleasure.